think you should yeah. oh, God, I, oh, God. Well, hello and welcome to Farno's Commentary. Today we're doing Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, we've got, of course, the boy Beef on the mic. Hello. Hello. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and play the feature. And if you're watching it on the DVD, we're starting the movie now. Sierra Affinity. Did Sierra make old PC games? I'm pretty sure it'd be a subsidiary. Yeah. I don't think it'd be the same company. Bold. Ooh. That's amazing because only the L and D in bold. Subliminal messaging. The um so this movie I found at the same time because I think his career personally yeah. um has gotten better. Not like it's not on a downward spiral, if you know what I mean, because some people well, Isn't he an Academy Award winner of these days? Uh I don't follow the Academy Awards. Yeah, he's, uh, he's pretty awesome, to be politics. honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like how um, this year no anime film is going for a best animated feature, but Boss Baby is. Boss. Oh, yeah, I know. Do Bill Paxton still X? Oh, he died. Yeah, hey. I was gonna say he, he's oh. dead. I feel like a dick. So, um, this movie, uh, for me, yeah, hit me at the same time as I watched Southpaw, which is again, same, same actor. Yeah. Um, there was another good movie. There was a, like, I bought a whole bunch of movies at the same time that were really friggin' amazing. Yeah. And this was one of them. And literally everybody who was like, Oh, what are you up to? I'm like, bro, come over. We'll watch a movie. I'm like, shut yeah. this on. And they're like, what is it? I'm like, just Shh, watch the movie. <laughs> Hush, my child. Which is ironic because, you know, I had this idea for this show that we're doing mm. ages ago when, back when you were living with Church. Yeah. Um, Yo, shout out to the boy Church. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, bro? Um, the, cause we were just sitting there having a conversation. I think we were like eating in the food court. Yeah. Um, the thing that gripes me is when you're watching a movie with other people, because obviously most people of t- today are flatting, right? Yeah. Like, no one just lives by themselves unless they're, like, either rich or live in a, like, hovel. Mm. Um, I love this scene. Um, talking through movies really annoys me. Like, it <laughs> irritates but, the fuck out of me. <laughs> but we're doing a podcast, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to agree, though. I, it, it does tilt me. Even though I'm well known for talking too much. Yeah. Isn't that a boy? I always find it weird when people in uniform are like, RD. And I'm like, why am I carrying it? Why would I be carrying it? This isn't like communist Russia. <laughs> well, it's interesting because um, in Australia, it's required by law to you carry ID. What? That's freaky. Uh, it's just about um, how how it's easier to identify people. Like That's one of the issues I, have, I think we have with New Zealand is no one carries ID on them. Yeah, because well, I don't see the point. Yeah, I guess. I love how tacky that was, the www.heritageclub.com, because, yeah. like, that's actually what people put on the side of their buildings. Yeah. So he's literally making a job selling from, copper from steel. Yeah. From stealing, um, recycling metal, which happened really badly in New Zealand recently. Yeah. A whole bunch of state houses were ripped off for it. Yeah. 
not to mention um it was counseling uh costing city councils massive amounts of money mm. his performance in this movie is amazing because in scenes where the camera's obviously focused on him yeah he is really uncomfortable to look at yeah he's uncomfortable in his mannerisms as well yeah his idiosyncrasies are bizarre and i like it wait so he's peddling himself for a job to a guy he's selling stolen goods to pretty much fantastic which is literally uh his response (laughs) (laughs) exactly yeah and he's just like yeah of course why would you like that's stupid anyway back to the even The interesting uh, choice of him yeah. as an actor, um, like, obviously he's a really, really good actor. Yeah. Um, and he proved that at a very young age as well. Yeah. The, it's it's hard to place him as an age in the movie as well. Because mm. he looks older, but also younger because, like, you don't, it doesn't actually portray him as an, like, he's a this person in this age. Yeah. Well, because we're, we're, we're given no context whatsoever of where this is. Yeah. You know, this the environment. It's quite good. Am- ambiguity can be a really good storytelling device. Oh, yeah. Because too, be- too many people put too many things in the hole. And that's, I think, it comes from, from more of a, uh, the, the cut and paste movie and TV shows that are, are produced these days. Yeah. Oh, that's yuck, man. That's yeah. This is literally to- this whole entire movie is about how media is horrible. They're like trying to save someone's life. That's just dis- that's disgusting. It's interesting the visuals, um, and I especially find it with what he's watching. Mm. Is he um, autistic? Well, I, it's not explained. Um, psychotic would be the word I would use. Mm. Maybe even Asperger's. He doesn't seem to grasp the concept of, like, human emotion yeah Hmm. (laughs) he's very inquisitive which I quite like yeah it's it's almost sick like that's how i would describe it like Mm. the way it's just it's fundamental that his character um seems unrelatable but that for therefore makes them relatable if that makes sense right sort of like seeing the the darker side of your own personal thoughts yeah it's an emphasis on like every every part that we all have you know when you see an accident or something on the side of the street and you're driving down the road you automatically look at it because it's just human nature to be inquisitive Mm. he takes it to 11 yeah (laughs) is it coming from the movie yeah okay i thought my next neighbors were mowing the lawns Oh, hang on. No, that is mowing. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, that's awkward. That's awkward. Um, can you close that window, please, Yeah, man? sure, I'll grab it. 
Oh, I can't. Hang on. Yeah, it's going to get boiling in here. Two, two really hot men, uh, figuratively hot men. and literally, yeah. stuck in a box. It's interesting because you're now, like, obviously this is a scene where he's watching the news, trying to find the footage from last night. And it's Whoa, that's like freaky, man. <laughs> it's interesting looking at his life because he's got like a tiny little bed, a TV, and just like a, a one of those standing closet things. It just shows him how he's living very small. Yeah, well, I suppose when your life is literally thievery. Yeah. The film's very minimalist, which is good. It is, eh? The um, cinematography, the way they frame characters is interesting. <laughs> he knows way too much about things. It's interesting. Um, <laughs> he's he's selling things that he stole yeah. at, competitively. <laughs> wow, that sort of like he was smiling without like happiness. Yeah, it was it, just it, like it no, just matter of factly because you smile with your eyes. Yeah, irrelevant of what people say whether you do with your mouth. Yeah, and it was interesting because, like, his smile was simply his teeth. Yeah. So he's now becoming an ambulance chaser, basically. I think ambulance chasers is a derogatory term for lawyers, isn't it? Is it? I think so. I've not heard of it before. He's not obstructing. <laughs> he was legitimately frightened. <laughs> yeah. I like that the it, it's pretty much filmed uh, in a way where it's timeless. Like, there's no discernible decade. Yeah. Because I think the, the true story, I think, was in the 70s. Oh, right. Because this is like the 80s and the 90s smashed yeah. together. I'm not aware enough of a hardware fan to know um, camera difference, obviously. Yeah. Someone would be able to point out and be like, oh, that's a uh, Sony <laughs> camcorder uh, Mark 11 that came out in 98. Yeah, in 98. It was what the Spy Scales movie was filmed on. Yeah. <laughs>
Wow. You know, I've been watching a lot of Chinese TV of late and they don't understand the island rule. And yeah. it's so refreshing watching something that does. Yeah. <laughs> It's, imp- it's interesting because I think even cinematography these days, as it's taught, mm. um, we stick to very, very s- simple rules. Yeah, but and, it's, it's great for storytelling. Yeah. And I think when you pass past it, it, that's when it gets complicated. And I think a lot of people do it incorrectly. Oh, man. So we were watching this shot yesterday and it was a good, mm, I'd say about 10 minutes of talking and the person was going from standing on the left to the right because they kept changing where the camera was positioned. Oh. And I was like, you were constantly breaking the eyeline rule. It yeah. was infuriating. This tracking shot's amazing. I love Birdman for that exact reason. Dude, oh my God, Birdman. The first time I watched it, I was like, oh, this movie looks interesting. It's like a crazy person. And then it's like, no, this movie's amazing just because yeah. of how well it's filmed. That looks familiar, eh? Is it Michelle Pfeiffer? No, no, I'm just talking about editing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that was creepy. He is severely uncomfortable. Yeah. That guy, like, the guy that just walked in, he usually plays, like, the asshole jerk guy yeah. character. Was this made on film? directional mic yeah oh straight shit. saver jay Yeah, of course. It's always a tragedy when someone white gets killed.
Oh, yuck. How disingenuous that smile was. It was it's oh. interesting how everybody else's dialogue is natural. And yeah. His seems rehearsed. Yeah. But it's not because, you know, because it's a movie and blah. But I'm yeah. saying because... Not the way he thinks. Yeah. What a cool name. De La Cruz. Oh, was a, uh, you got a Golden Globe non- non- uh, nom- uh. nomination. That's the word. Thank you. I found they've got a bit of taste in the Academy. Yeah. Is advised. <laughs> <laughs> composite cable see that's what media is it's, it's not especially in a big city like that it's not actual news like this is what's yeah. happening this is who it's related to this is why it occur- occurred it's literally fear-mongering don't leave your house don't do this because <laughs> it's terrorism it's terrorism but it's it's pumped directly into your house oh yeah man fear-mongering is how you control the masses Wow. That's messed up, man. Mm. Interestingly, usually with score, I'm like, I'd like to know, like, you know, it's, it's the specific composer. I know exactly who it is. But for this film, I think the ambience is uh, suits it a lot better than having a score. Yeah. Of my neighbors mowing every time there's a shot of him at his house. Yeah. I can't remember what it's strange he because like. he introduced himself as Lou Bloom earlier. Yeah. And now he's forcing this person, this is like Lewis. So I think he sees this man as lesser. He's a pilot from Rogue One. Yes, that's right. Mm. Oh, his face. Oh, no. Right. It's like he's re- rehearsed human emotion. Yeah. It's yeah. sick. Like an alien who's come to Earth to learn about us. That was Mr. Bean. Yeah. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa, what the hell? He's a pathological liar. Yeah. It's interesting because his um, mannerisms change when he talks about himself. Mm. (laughs) 
that's a real shit people tell you when you're going for jobs. Yeah. Bro, thirty dollars cash per night. Yeah, but I mean, like, if the guy literally has zero dollars oh, cash every night, yeah, it's still something. He can go to a soup kitchen with that. Whoa. Uh, yuck his laugh is so like disjointed from him it's uh, yuck (laughs) (laughs) the smile that's just his mouth yeah uh, how how do you learn that I think it's probably why they put him in sunglasses for some of the scenes because It's physically uncomfortable to try and do that. Mm. I do it at work all the time. Uh, the, like pretend smile. Yeah. Like you, you, you have to walk through someone's office and people look at you and you're sort of like. Oh. I, I think like for me, it must be scary for people to see me fake smile because because of them, my theater training, I smile genuinely with my eyes as well. Yeah. Even if I hate the shit out of them. whoa yeah that right there was the truest emotion he showed in the whole film so far So, um, is Nightcrawler a reference to this type of media? I think it's a reference to the job type. Right. Yep, failure to communicate. Yeah, that's how you lose disasters. Yeah, it's like landing on the wrong side of a Turkish inlet and then having two armies decimated. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just keeps response. moving. <laughs> I 
<laughs> that's that's amazing. And this is why. Oh my he god, is he going successful. in? He needs a haircut. The little knot on top is driving me insane. <laughs> Yeah, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. That's so perfect. You pull at the heartstrings, eh? And then people, like, write a Twitter status about it. Yeah. Yeah, you used to be able to find them in things called libraries. Yeah. My school's had this. Yeah. My school used to order in books for me. It was awesome. That is... Yep. <laughs> There's like this inspirational ambient music. Yeah. There was an elevator pitch. Mm. You know, apparently, thanks to HD television, they had to actually get better resolution shots. Oh, and I was going to mention that. They had to put uh, special chips in the cameras, otherwise your hosts and presenters look terrible. Because, <laughs> like, no one looks good under HD. So well, movies have filters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's kick this PC.
Ah, I see. He's using the names that they've put on the actual article. Yeah. Oh, so Auckland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how, like, nonchalant he is about it all. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the ability not to show empathy. Yeah. Makes certain people really, really good in certain industries. Yeah, it's a nice car. Wait. Did, did he not steal that? No. He would have bought it from what he's made from... Um, wow. Yet he's still paying him $30. Oh, well, you know, he's the hired help. I'm completely decked out. Buckets of ducats. Wait, what? Does it actually eat the paint? Yeah. What? Oh, dude. Gasoline is super uh, corrosive. So we should never run your car empty because then it picks up all like the bits of uh, stuff that it's eaten inside your gas tank and um, puts it into your fuel injector. Delicious. Bed, bath, and beyond. Okay, that was creepy. (laughs) The way he didn't respond to that. Yeah. Like, to him, Rick is not human. He's a tool. Yeah. Wow, I didn't think he'd do that with his camera. What the fuck? You think he'd do that with a friggin' person? What? It's got that inspirational music playing again. Yeah. What a juxtaposition. He's legit just committed a felony. And a pretty bad one as well. Yeah. But it's interesting because he's not... His reaction is literally... How it must feel for director getting the perfect setting and line. Yeah. And having that scene just pop with your actors and just like... And he's just like... 
and he just made it. Oh, that's creepy. The sort of like doll like features. Yeah. yeah. And the way his hair sits as well. Yeah. And Billy P's there like, oh shit, I'm late. Whoa. Wow, that was yuck. Smart. What? Oh, that was creepy. Yeah. KWL in the news. Oh my god. She's literally pointing out that he's got blood on him. She's like, he's like, cool. Um, do you want to go get Mexican <laughs> yeah. food or I'm not going to give you footage anymore? He's not listening. No. <laughs> Sorry. Two point four. <laughs> Like a, this are the most robotic reply. Yeah. So this is a normal reaction to someone saying that to you. His yeah. is just like, you don't understand, go away. <laughs> I really like Mexican food, but I can't eat it because of the whole cilantro thing. Cilantro? Oh, um, uncooked coriander. Oh, right. It tastes like soap and smells like stink, stink bugs. It's genetic, yeah. Yeah, it's genetic. It's not human That's conversation. That's creepy. <laughs> I 
He googled it. <laughs> it's like when I watched my first ever upload on YouTube. Mm. I'm like, what have I become? Well, developments of YouTube channels are interesting. Mm. You can see the point where people become famous. Yeah. I, I um, watched uh, Phil DeFranco's first upload. And that, that was crazy, man. He looks like an 11-year-old. <laughs> Uh, yuck. Oh. oh. Uh, this is he's weird. really uncomfortable, eh? Uh, he's overstepping his boundaries. Mm. He's probably going to lose this. It's the eyes as well. Yeah. Always love this shot in all movies. The over the shoulder close up. Yeah. See how he's not in frame there? Yeah. But they've kept the eyeline rule. She's still on the left, he's still on the right. Yeah. Never break the eyeline rule. Yeah. I'd love to, like, be standing next to the director with this shot. This conversation's incredible. It's dark, too. Yeah. Because he's just, like, repeatedly stabbing her with, like, facts about how her fu- she's, like, right on the precipice of the edge. Yeah. And she's just like, no, this is making me really uncomfortable. I don't want to think about it. Because he is threatening. Yeah. Where's my other drink? Oh. Yeah, right?
This video is not sponsored by Monster Zero Ultra, but I am. Though, uh, Monster, if you're uh, keen to sponsor these commentaries. <laughs> I mean, my entire life is powered by bloody horrible crap that's not good for me. Wait, blimps this little thing? Sorry, rigid ships. <laughs> rigid airship. <laughs> what the? What are those things? The whacking, waving arm, inflatable. I don't know. I can't remember that spiel. <laughs> what are they for? Advertising for car yards, I think. Well, wow, that'd keep me away. Yeah. <laughs> if I saw something like that at the front of a business, I would never visit their business. He smiled and laughed at the end of that conversation like he was talking to an audience. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> bra, come heal me, bra. Good times. Good times. Yeah, the dude in the room is like real uncomfortable looking. Yeah, he's like, sorry, bruh. Kent shock neck. Hmm. See, even his anger appears to be false. It's like he thinks that's how he should be reacting right now. Yeah. So he reacts. <laughs> that's frightening. This is a reaction. Dude, but it's your own fault. You didn't join him.
you see it's interesting so that looks like windows xp but it's like a gps system and somebody said brah so like what decade is it Mm. it's any decade yeah Yeah, right? That would be a way heavier story. Whoa. Yep. Yeah, he is straight going to prison. And the only reason he's here is because he wants to see what he did. Yeah. Someone fucked with their brakes. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Wow. If he survives this, bro, you are going to prison. For an extensive period of time. I don't know why, but I thought Nightcrawler was like a spy movie for some reason. Not an X-Men Origins movie? No, no. Did people legitimately think that? No. Oh, but other titles yeah He really should be like giving Rick more money because Rick knows every single thing he's done. So uh, don't stab people that know that much about you. It's like, you know, backstabbing best friends because they know the most about you. It would be over. Oh, now they'll be able to catch them. Yeah, that would be a normal reaction, wouldn't it? Yeah. So they'll be able to catch these guys. Yeah. So that was a normal cool. reaction. Would you describe his character as anything but normal? N- no. Whoa. This is the killer app. If this gets like on telly, whoo. Well, 
What country is it where it's illegal for the press to turn up before the cops? Unsure. I think it's one of the South American ones. Well, it's interesting because people defend the way media is portrayed as like, oh, everyone has a right to know. But it's like, well, hang on a second. People have the right to know the truth. Yeah. And the truth isn't determined by happenstance and what it looks like at a time. Truth is determined by 12 people in a, in a jury. <laughs> yeah. See, this is why I wish we would like create a device that would just find out if someone was telling the truth. Like... Uh, like a brainwave device like not the polygraph obviously no, that, that can be faked quite easily. yeah but like something that actually like visualized your memories well the interesting one is it's not just about um it's not just about um how polygraphs don't work because you can fake it it's also you can be led right i see because it's that whole empathy thing yeah and so the like, fact that like um people things people say to you can actually change how you remember something yeah that's why human memory is garbage yeah it's pretty bad that's why i kind of wish the grain from black mirror was real yeah but then i think it'd be very similar where you just obsess over parts of your life yeah i suppose did you are touching things everywhere right now Wait, are they going to get arrested for this murder? That's why they're fucking bailing. Yeah. Because I was thinking, like, dude, if you schedule tires, they could think you're the killer. So please don't do that. And he did. Cool. It's like jizzing in his pants. Yeah. He has the killer app that he promised her. Whoa. It's interesting watching the three of them react to the same footage differently. Yeah. Because he really doesn't want them to print it. Mm. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bro, Holy they're not shit. What are you on about? It's weird seeing that guy be the hero in a movie. Hmm. Whoa. Or does he, he doesn't have any empathy. Yeah. What the hell? Does he think he's God? That's frightening. That dialogue was amazing. Yeah. Cherry on top. Killed his competition. Yeah, literally. It's freaky. He's talking like a politician. Mm.
Wow. Wait, did he not give them the identities of the shooters? No. What? What? But the Bro. cops can catch them. He wants them to kill again. What? What the fuck? That's frightening. I love the cinematography in this scene because you're just showing showing so much information in such a short amount of time. His face. Oh, that smile is so un uncomfortable. It's crazy how much work goes into that. Mm. Well, it's because it's live. Mm. Whoa. It's on every channel. Ma'am. <laughs> what? And cops. Yep. Whoa. So he sees them as above him. Yeah.
this is so strange. Because if they find out that he's got this evidence, he's going to prison for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yes. The smile is uncomfortable. Yeah. His entire persona is uncomfortable. Because... Yeah. It's like you were saying earlier, he's learned how to be human instead of just being a human. Mm. You need to delete this footage or you will go to prison. What an idiot. So he just used a federal database to search a license plate. They'll know. Unless he's like freakishly learned how to like hide his online identity. Yeah, right? Yeah. So he wants to set up ready to film. Yeah. The exact same line of dialogue Bill Paxton said to him. Yep. That third person talk is also uncomfortable. (laughs) There's two people. You went from the same position you're in to the same position you're in. He did that like a New Zealander. We never like oversell ourselves. Yeah. I found um, American uh, HR people don't like it. Mm. You don't sell yourself. I'm like, but that's our culture. You moved here. Probably should have learned that. Yeah. Well, it's almost like our entire nation has no money and it's like repeatedly beat into us our entire lives. Mm. Oh, the economy's bad. It's like, well, the only economy gets bad if people don't spend more money. Like, that's (laughs) how economies work. You know what? This is going to sound strange. I'm probably going to get raked over the coals online for this. But I hope he doesn't get caught. (laughs) 
he's so freaky and strange, but I want Rick to still have a job. You work for a New Zealand company and bonuses never come. That's a real thing. You're endangering lives, man. Well, Rick's dead. I liked you, Rick. You've had like 10 lines of dialogue. <laughs> but I liked you. You feel good about like possible human life being lost. It's like he's got the shovel in his hand, eh? Yeah. Every statement of that last piece of dialogue was him shoveling another yeah. shovel of dirt of his own grave. Because he killed that security guard in the beginning, right? Well, he at least beat the hell out of him because he stole his watch. Yeah. Which I think the last scene where he had his hands up and you saw the top of him he was still wearing it mm -hmm. He's, he's got it all figured out. Yeah. 
you know, if you had a hybrid car, that person wouldn't even see that engine start. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. He's dead. He's ultra not alive anymore. the thing i love is the tone and majority of this movie is taking place at night yeah the only parts that are during the day is when he's in his own house yeah Wow, this is so tense. Yep. Yeah. What the hell? What a strange, strange person. There is no response to what it just said. Yeah. It's literally like, I'm just going to go do the thing. Oh, 
Oh my god. <laughs> like my throat's gotten all dry. <laughs> <laughs> It's literally the scene when, like, documentists will be watching, like, lions hunting shit. <laughs> and you'd be like, please make the kill, please make the kill, you know, this is going to be great footage. You put sad music over the top when you get it. Mm. Man. Is that a shell in the background? Does that company still exist? Unsure. Because uh, they ain't in New Zealand anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Just starts filming it there. <laughs> Oh, God. Films the niggas car. I don't want to be doing this, man. Man, shit is about to go down. See, Rick's reaction's a human reaction. Yeah. Oh, I love it. The ambient music in that scene was very, very similar to the train from the first Godfather in the restaurant scene. Yeah, yeah. I find it so insane that the only reason he's doing this is because he met Bill Paxton that one time. Yeah. It's so frightening. This is actually so cool. <laughs> like, I've always loved, like, car chases and movies. Yeah. One of my favorite, um, like, little things I like to do is just sit there and just binge watch cops. It doesn't even matter if it's just YouTube, like, cut bits <laughs> or entire seasons. Oh, shit. Oh my god. So, um, Lou's gonna get some major prison time because he'll need to explain how he knew the identities of the killers because the cops had no leads. <laughs> Even Lou was like, oh shit. Yeah. But for him, it was because he didn't want to scratch his car. Yeah. 
Oh my god. That's so cool. Like in real life, this would be horrific. But because it's in a film, for some reason, I'm like, hell yeah, car chases. Yeah. I like Rick. Oh shit, Rick's dead. You know what I really liked? Is as soon as that cop opened the door, he started lighting that guy up. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, this is America, bitch. And then the American flag wrapped around a bald eagle fell out of the sky. Oh, this is yuck. Yeah, he is. Yep. <laughs> he said that like he took his magical amulet. Yeah. You know, if Rick survives this, I really hope he brings down the hammer of the law on this guy. He's so creepy and yuck. Like he's part of the team. Yep. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fourth wall break. Yeah. They're watching. We're yeah. watching them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a wonderfully framed shot. Unfortunately, because it's on DVD, you can tell it's a green screen, which yeah. is a problem. But other than that, it's fine. It's a good shot. I love that he's looking at the camera 
while we're looking at them. So now it's it's still a fourth wall break. Yeah. Because he's watching the scene too. Yeah. Oh shit, the police. Yeah, of course. She's so happy. Bro. (laughs) What did I say before? Yeah. It's interesting seeing this guy play the hero. I like it. This is his face of like everyone's crazy except yeah. me. <laughs> oh, he is going to prison for a long time. chucked up Mm. (laughs) she wants me to be sad but you said you didn't see them you didn't see them in Mm. Mm mm-hmm Rick survived. Oh my god. Looks directly at camera. Yeah. yeah. It was like there was there was another fourth wall break because he's yeah. like, you guys know I'm like, yeah. Like, <laughs> walks away scot free. Actual. Here he is what? walking out of the police station. What? 
still wearing the that's still great. wearing the watch and that's that's going back to the beginning yeah that who's the director can i grab the dvd please sure because i need to see more of their work That's weird. It's got the DOP, but I oh, have Dan. Yeah, but also he deserves, he deserves an award, the DOP. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The DOP does deserve an award. His framing's fantastic. What the? He's got two bands. <laughs> Written and directed. Yeah. Mad Men Entertainment. I love you guys. Give me free stuff. Us. Free yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, were they the distributors? Mad Men. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I love Mad Men. They bring a lot of good content to New Zealand. Right there. Man, I wish Rick had just kept his trap shut. And been all like, I know how Dude, yuck... This okay, is. Th- this is the thing, man. He should have said something way earlier, like for, for, as a as a person, like yeah. not as a character, obviously, because he was clearly like homeless, like barely surviving. Yeah, went from like oh, it's a hundred seventy five dollars a night. You're driving around in a thirty thousand dollar car. Yeah, like him arguing over fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, guys, um, that's it. We've got the ending credits rolling. This is a fantastic film. Uh, man, thanks for uh, coming along with me. What have we got on the uh, agenda next time? Um, I, I think we'll keep it loose. Um, you know, I, I don't want to trap us in a sci-fi bubble because um, being the amount of sci-fi I own, we'll be there forever. <laughs> All right. I'll, well, I'll find something decent and I won't make you watch Pulp Fiction yet. Make it like an anniversary. Anniversary, Pulp Fiction. Oh, God, save me. All right, I'll catch you guys next time.